We've just come out of the match day minus two press conference, which Sam Kerr, front of the media, announced that she will be available for the game on Monday against Canada, which is some really thrilling news. I'm definitely going to be available, but how we decide to use that is, you know, not to be given to the opposition, I think, is the main thing. In the end, she clarified, yes, I'm fit to play. Uh, the calf strain seems to be sufficiently resolved um, and she'll take her place in the uh, in the lineup. She also announced today, Taylor, that today was the first time she got to put boots on and get out there on the pitch. Is that itself a sign that she might start or do you feel like she's going to come off the bench? Look, I do think she will come off the bench and that seems to be the prevailing wisdom. Although it has been something we've debated, if Sam Kerr comes on, gets re-injured, can't last for a certain number of minutes, does Australia want to burn two subs, one to bring her on, one to take her off? I guess maybe Sam Kerr is the player that it's worth taking that risk on. Certainly no one's discussing whether or not Sam Kerr is sharp or match fit because Sam is an instinctive player the sort of player that might need one chance and even on one leg might be able to score that chance. So I think we're going to take her on trust for this one. No, we are. And also Ellie Carpenter front of the media as well. And she was gave a little bit of an update on Mary Fowler as well, since so Mary's training and even referred to Mary as one of the senior players in the squad. Obviously, she is so young. Uh, you know, Mary, she's an amazing young player. She's, I would say she's quite senior in the team, to be honest. And we really missed her the other night. And I'm really excited that she will be back available for Monday. The program, the recovery program, was always going to be gradual reintroduction into training for Mary Fowler and for Ivy Lewick, um, culminating in getting sign off from doctor on the morning of the game. So um, I imagine Mary would have been done some limited involvement today, but th this is, sounds like it's all going according to plan. So maybe, just maybe, things are, are coming to, together for uh, the Matildas. Now, Ellie wasn't just trying to give us uh, the medical update. She also spoke on the game against Nigeria and she had some interesting thoughts about saying it was one of their better games, their best game going forward into final third entries. Uh, when we did the analysis, we actually have played the best game in final third box entries we have in the last 15 games and we created a lot of chances in attack and obviously those things that went wrong, um, that's football, but we know that those things obviously are not acceptable and we're all turning a new leaf and like I said, since that whistle went, all our focus is on Canada on Monday because we know what we need to do. Yeah, look, I do think it, it stumbled across something that yourself, Emily Gilnick, and I discussed last night, which was the quality of chances. Yes, Australia had 28 shots, eight on target uh, in the loss to Nigeria, but so many of them were low percentage chances, and we did discuss if they need to be more patient. But, hey, the Matildas seem happy. That's what their video review has found, and it does bring back memories for me of the 1-0 loss to Canada right here in Brisbane last year, where they peppered the goal but just couldn't score. Heading into that game against Canada, obviously Sam Kerr, the inclusion of her and potentially Mary Fowler is a massive boost. What is the things, how does that help the Matildas get the th all important three points? Because they do ultimately need to win that game unless uh, Ireland can do them a little bit of a favour against Nigeria. Which I wouldn't be surprised at. I mean, Ireland have played extremely well and yes, they're out of contention, but the pride involved in that team, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't give Nigeria um, a significant scare. Um, Ellie Carpenter did make the point that um, it, they, she doesn't think Canada will sit back. She thinks it'll be an open game, which suits the way the Australians want to play. It becomes far more transitional. Um, but I just, uh, and, and pertaining to your point, um, we have an interesting piece on Keep Up by our colleague Taryn Heddo, who points out that at the point when um, Nigeria scored their third goal, uh, the XG for Australia had dropped down significantly, which plays exactly into what you're saying. The quality of the chances is, is key to how they beat uh, Canada. And the, be the beauty of having Sam, of course, is that Sam turns average chances into good chances or average passes into good passes through her ability. Is the inclusion of Sam Kerr going to, to help them out with that, those long balls that we haven't seen work out so well throughout this tournament? This is the absolute crux of the matter. How do they create better quality chances without just those fairly aimless balls in behind, hoping to hit, get behind the fullback and, and hit a striker on the run, which we saw, you know, even when the ball did go over the top for Courtney Vine, the ball is travelling at such pace and she's travelling at such pace that it's so difficult to bring the ball down. Um, the way that they played in the middle of that game against Nigeria, the progressive football is far more effective and created better chances. But the temptation will be there as soon as Sam comes on. Let's just hit Sam from every angle. Um, that's fine in the last few minutes of the game, but it's not something you want to see them doing from the moment she's introduced.
Something else about that game against Canada that's been announced is the referee for that game. So I hear you've got some uh, some fascinating news about the referee. Yeah, just a little tidbit. It's Stephanie Frappard, one of the highest profile and best referees in the world. You would have seen Stephanie referee men's international football and Champions League. She's refereed Australia twice. Funnily enough, the 2015 2-0 win for Australia against Nigeria, but most recently a 2-0 loss to Canada at the 2016 Olympics. So I think all Matildas fans will be hoping that that is not an omen. Well, they certainly will be hoping, and uh, thank you guys for joining me. To catch all the latest news about the FIFA Women's World Cup, you can catch us on keepup.com.au and keep up on our socials as well.